The time having arrived, I call the special meeting of the City Council to order for today, June 17, 2019. Please stand and salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. President. Like, uh, uh, Council please, Sullivan. Please stand, stay standing, and I'd like to take a moment of silence. Uh, Elias Lianis, um, who is uh, a great, great block of business owner, Legion Parkway, his family, Ward 1 residents. Uh, he passed away suddenly. Uh, a lot of us just attended the wake, so if we could remember Ms. Lianis, that'd be great. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Just turned it around. <laughs> Uh, councilors, before we begin, I got a call from Councilor Cruz, who is uh, still on the mans after a little surgery, oh, and Councilor Monahan, who, who was called in to work, so he won't be here today either. I hope you all had a good uh, week and a half off uh, as we come back to uh, deal with the issues of the budget. That being <laughs> said, Mr. Clerk, the agenda, please. We have the call of the meeting. That will be accepted and placed on file. The officer's return of notice. Accepted and placed on file. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of June 3rd, 4th, and 5th of 2019. That too shall be accepted and we placed on file. The Brockton Physical 20 budget. Public hearing was held on Monday, June 3rd, 2019 at 6.30 p.m., at which time any interested party in the fiscal budget were welcome to come speak on the budget. The public hearing was closed and the budget process began with the mayor and department heads answering questions on their budgets. This discussion of the budget took place on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2019. It was established that any amendments to this budget will be made and voted on in the upcoming special meeting of the City Council on June 17th, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers, second floor of City Hall, 45 School Street, Brockton and all other related matters. We have the report of the Public Safety Committee for its meeting of June 5th, 2019. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have the petition of In Good Health, Inc., 1200 West Chestnut Street, Brockton, for retail marijuana license at 1200 West Chestnut Street, Brockton. David Noble, President. The license is for retail, manufacturing, and cultivation. The owner of the property is MNP Realty Trust. This was favorable with a request for the item to be heard on June 17, 2019 at the special city council meeting by a motion of Councilor Monaghan and seconded by Council Durand Court. The motion carried unanimously. Mr. President. Council Fowler. I'd like to move that we take the matter of in good health out of order and mm -hmm. hold that Second. First. Second. Second. The motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. All those opposed? We shall do. Uh, Madam. <coughs> I think the matter has been read. Yep. Or yep. Um, open the hearing. It's a favor. The time has arrived, and I call this uh, me, uh, open meeting open. And if there's anybody here in favor of the petitioner, please come forward and, and state your name and speak on the microphone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members of the council, uh, we appreciate uh, this attorney, John McCluskey, representing uh, In Good Health. And we appreciate your taking us out of order and having us on the agenda for this special meeting this evening. Um, before you is an application for recreational licenses uh, and wholesale uh, and grow. And uh, <clears throat> as you know, this matter came before the council a few weeks back and was referred to the uh, Public Safety Committee. Uh, we did meet a couple weeks ago uh, and uh, presented further evidence uh, in support of the application. Uh, including uh, testimony from the Brockton Police Department and the Fire Department, um, engaged the committee in, in some discussion. And I think uh, at this point we've addressed all of the issues, including those that are in the, the new ordinance that was recently approved by the, uh, by the council. And um, uh, it's further been fully vetted before the planning board. We've been not on this, but we've been before the Zoning Board of Appeals on at least three <coughs> occasions for a special permit uh, under the medical side and, and have gone through all of the security um, 
aspects of the business. Uh, the, the CCC uh, in Boston looks at, at In Good Health as one of the uh, primary uh, models of uh, m marijuana manufacturing and sales. And uh, based upon everything, we'd respectfully request that you approve the uh, licenses this evening. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else here that wants to speak on behalf of the petitioner? <coughs> anyone? No. no going once, going twice? Unless you have some questions. Does anybody have any questions? No. I declare that portion closed. Is anybody here in opposition to the petition? In opposition? Going once, going twice. I declare that portion closed. Now the motion is on granting by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Chairman, if I might, um, Ma if I could, Mr. On the motion. I near. Mr. President, if I might, um, I just want to make a, a, a point that, as everybody knows, this uh, particular uh, business is located on West Chestnut Street, which is in Ward 3. And I'm urging my fellow councilors to vote in support of this. This is the first recreational marijuana facility that will be opening in the city of Brockton. Uh, due diligence was with the ordinance committee some uh, months, to, months ago in making sure that um, all and everyone that was applying would have to come through the process of coming to city council, which they have done, as well as the process that they've uh, also started to do with the cannabis committee as, as well. So um, at this point in time, I, um, I commend them and congratulate them in, in the work that, that's been done look forward to them continuing with business within this city. Um, we're far behind from where we should be in bringing in some revenue, so I would just think that um, for anybody to not vote in favor of this would not be acting in the best interest of the city of Brockton. And as we all know, recreational marijuana is a law and we need to start to move forward with it. So um, I just ask my counselors to please um, Please support this uh, in, uh, in this effort. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, as I said earlier, the motion <coughs> is on granting by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative, zero in opposition. The license is granted. Mr. President, I move Thank reconsideration you. and hope Ladies it does not second. second. A motion for reconsideration has been properly made in second. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? It carries. Thank you. Right. And best of luck. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Clerk, number please. four, please. Just want to move on to the budget, don't you? Yeah. The Brockton Fiscal 20 budget, as stated, a public hearing was held on Monday, June 3rd, 2019 at 6.30 p.m., at which time any interested party in the fiscal budget were welcome to speak on the budget. The public hearing was closed and the budget process began with the mayor and department heads answering questions on their budgets. This discussion of the budget took place on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2019. It was established that any amendments to this budget will be made and voted on in the upcoming special meeting of the City Council on June 17, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers, second floor, City Hall, 45 School Street. Uh, councilors, uh, do we have any motions uh, re relative to reductions or cuts? Uh, cuts? Yes. We Councilor Borgart. Well, am I the first here? I, I was. Well, I had um, two to submit at present here for the planning and uh, yeah, two for the planning department. Would you like me to read them? Yeah, please. Okay, all right. For, uh, this is where I was debating here. Uh, first of all, there was a proposal for a Main Street manager for 40000 and that was funded, so I was asking to uh, deduct that. And then there was another for 80,000 for a um, new uh, planning senior planner. So I had both of those on here. And um, let me provide you with those information here. Thank you. Let's see those, uh, Sharon. I mean, it sure at some point I was city be, be ready for that, but at this point I just think it's uh, not fiscally um, sound. Okay, 
she's all right. What did she want? So it's a hundred and twenty thousand from the exactly. Yes. Yes. On planning, but she's she's wrong down here. Well, I was debating. It's two percent. She reduced it by forty thousand. She wants it by one twenty. I'm going to have to clarify that. It's, it's eighty on the other one. It's eighty so. on the other. Did she put it on the other? Okay. Mr. President. Uh, Council Sullivan. Uh, on the motion, I just, if, if nobody objects, I just want to have a follow-up question for Mr. Claxon. Um, there was some uh, some questions. Remember about the 40 grand and then the additional 40 grand that was going to be subsidized from BRA? Uh, and I was going to meet with Troy, but unfortunately the, the mayor's dad passed away. So I just didn't know if he had any uh, opinion uh, from Phil Nazarello from the solicitor's office relative to that. Uh, Good no, evening. No objections, Mr. Claxon. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President and Councilors. Uh, as a follow-up to our discussion at that meeting and the question raised by Councillor Sullivan, I did have a conversation with Attorney Bridges, Assistant City Solicitor, who uh, is working on uh, a written opinion that, that she will provide. I'll offer a synopsis of it. At that meeting, I had suggested that it would, in my opinion, be proper for any entity to make a donation to the city and mm -hmm. then for the money to be expended by the department. She concurred with that opinion, and so that, that's the recommendation that, that, that we'll continue to, to make. Obviously, if the money is uh, not approved in the budget, uh, the point becomes moot for that specific position, but I think it was a good opportunity to have that discussion for perhaps future collaborations. Uh, Mr. Claxton, do you have any guesstimate on when she'll have that generated, the opinion? Uh, w when we discussed it, she had hoped to have it completed by the end of this week. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Sullivan. Uh, the motion's on the floor to second. reduce the Someone planning. Seconded. Do we need to second it? What is it? Sure. The motion was made. No, nobody nobody made a second, second, second on the motion. Oh. Second. I second the motion. Motion has been properly made and properly second to cut the uh, Council Sullivan. Just to briefly. Yeah, I, I concur with Councillor Borgard. I, I think at some point uh, a Main Street manager and $80,000 for another member of that department would be perfectly appropriate. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go back to something that the chairman mentioned about three years ago, and that was let's do something, let's, let's get it done, and let's show the public that we have really started to make some strides. And we do have a parking garage. We do have some housing going downtown. We, we do hopefully have a Brockton Beer Company coming to Frederick Douglass Avenue. But I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that we, I think, uh, authorized $300,000 in a grant to study downtown two-way traffic. I have no idea what happened to that. Mm -hmm. It just seems like we never follow through. And you know, it's hard sitting here because we know everyone. I mean, it's a small city. It's not like Boston where you've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of department heads. We know everyone. We like them. We work with them. But unfortunately, we have a statutory responsibility to take a look at the budget and to make sure that it's being expended in a way that yields benefits for our residents. And at this time, based on what I've seen in the last three and a half years, I don't think we're ready to take this next step yet. I, I, I want to see something more than housing, something more than, than a parking garage. I'd like to see some jobs generated. I'd like to see the planning department kick it into high gear. And then let's evaluate what they really need. But I'm not ready to jump for this yet. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Take place uh, Mr. President, pardon me. For, for clarity, yeah. we should tell the counselors to get out. Make I will be happy to cut. correct any of my errors. Like, yeah. <laughs> that 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 long, that. Take a vote, then move on to the next one. I agree with you. This sir. is how it's done. No. Uh, Madam Counselor. Uh, on the motion, Mr. On the motion. Uh, Mr. President. Go ahead, sir. Uh, just, you know, and, I, and if, I'm, if I'm wrong on this, uh, Mr. Clarkson, uh, please correct me. Uh, but we can't. We can, we can express an interest in seeing what we would like to cut, mm -hmm. but we cannot cut. pull the money from that position directly. We're pulling it just from, you know, from a larger pool of money. Correct. So, Correct. so that, that position could still exist position. with other money still in the department. We cannot uh, specifically cancel out a position just like that, right? Right. 
Yep. Right. Okay. Right. But I also uh, I'm going to go back to what something that Council Fowell said last year was that if there's an intent by this council to reduce a budget by $120,000, mm -hmm. that the administration wouldn't just basically go out and take it from someplace else, knowing what the with the will of the council is. Yep. You know. So. <laughs> Uh, Council Vorgart, I believe you need to uh, read this out so that we know exactly what we're taking these amounts from. Oh, okay, be happy to. So, this will give you a chance to do the math. Can I, we have the <coughs> individual. <coughs> we're just running a commercial right now. Council, you ready? Okay, you, you told me here. Too. I didn't know if you wanted me to rewrite. Just it, read but what you it have. It became 120,000. No, no, but dollars. what's on the from what the top as well? From where you're taking it from? Oh, it was from the planning department. Yes. Okay. For personal services other than overtime. Yeah, that part I had said, and I had said for the two, you know, proposed positions. So it came to 120, and um, the amount at the beginning for the salaries with these included was 424. Um, four hundred and twenty-four thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars. So, if you subtract one hundred twenty thousand from it, you have uh, three thousand three three hundred and four thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars. There we go. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is that in the form of a motion? Yes. And Council uh, Derrickwood, you're still seconding the motion. Yes. Okay. The motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Next item, please. I'm happy to rewrite this. <laughs> uh, Council uh, Ianeri, did you uh, have a, a cut or hey, Do I have a cut? No, there's not much to cut in this budget, so I have no cuts. All right. Thank you. Council Powell. Okay, I, I have uh, a few items that I want to offer for consideration. Uh, page 156 in the budget. It's under the law department. And it's uh, line item 531709 for $198,469. That is for the education equity suit. And as all of you may have noticed, as of June 16th, there is a group that filed a lawsuit regarding state aid for public schools. I certainly support anything and everything we can do to bring funding into the Brockton Public Schools but you'll notice in this article that we are not a part of that lawsuit. And as a matter of fact, there is a specific quote in this, in this news article. From yesterday's paper. Which says, uh, Trip Jones, the lead strategist working with Brockton, Worcester, and New Bedford officials on their potential lawsuit, said his group may still file a lawsuit of their own, but are also working with the state legislature. So I have no problem at a future time. Mm -hmm giving the law department $198,000 to help our kids. But I'm not gonna throw it into that budget where apparently we're not actively pursuing that and I think it's premature to do that. I think we ought to preserve this funding and use it at some point when it's really needed. Thank Mr. you. Mr. President, I'll second that. All right, a motion has been made on the floor and second. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion carries. What's the cut? Okay, hold on. What's the cut? Dennis. Math is not my strong point now. Okay. Dennis. Dennis? Nine, five, six, eight, eight. Mr. Chairman, I'll need just a minute before I go on to the next one here. Yeah, I, I used mine. <coughs> Councilor Rodriguez, do you have a. Uh, I have one. Yes. You still have this going. Still, I think we're still no, doing. We still have this. We're going. still having that one. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll sit down. Mm -hmm. Minus nine eight four six nine. We're waiting for the total. Six nine seven two one nine. Waiting for him to see what the actual amount is and what the net figure will be. <coughs> what the difference is. That look right. And then we'll have to take a vote on it. Right.
if he reduces it. We should give this back. We're gonna take a shot, uh, just a shot recess. Back in session, Councilor right, Powell. Yes, Mr. President, with respect to the law department budget for fiscal year 2020, I move uh, to reduce line item 531709, which contains $198,469. I move to strike that amount, which will reduce the appropriation for ordinary maintenance services from $895,688 to $697,219. A difference of? Motion. So Has the motion been second? Let's have a second. Let's have the difference of. The, the, the difference will be one hundred ninety-eight thousand four hundred sixty-nine dollars. Ninety-eight six forty-nine. Okay, now. Okay. No motion was made and second. All in favor of that? Opposed? Passes. Yep. Okay. Six, you don't need anything else, right? No. It's not long enough to get that. Councilor, no, no. let them go back. Good. Next, anybody else want to come? Ready to keep going. Yeah, if you got something else, there? I, I co-signed with with Win. Okay. I, the next one, uh, Councilors, is page two zero two under public property. And it's going to be line item 589000. 589000 for $120,000. Public property capital outlay. As I understand it, uh, this was placed in the budget in order to perhaps move some city departments from City Hall. One of them would be public property, there might be some others. Uh, I'm cutting this because I don't think we should take public property out of City Hall, away from engineering, away from the assessor's office, uh, those away from planning. All of those departments function cohesively with respect mm -hmm. to zoning board of appeals issues, planning board issues. And in addition, public property uh, has all of the various inspections, plumbing, electrical, uh, building permits. And if we were to send them over to the district attorney's office, frankly, I don't think most people in the city know the DA's office unless you've been a defendant, you're a criminal attorney, or you worked for them. And so we would be sending people from the east side through the center of the city over to the DA's office. We don't know what the leasing costs are. We don't know what the costs are to build out that building to make it habitable. And in addition, we'd be doing it at a time when we're gonna be taking down the Kresge building Mm -hmm. uh, strike that, the uh, Ganley building. So traffic is certainly going to be congested in that area. I would think parking will be okay. affected. So do some city departments need additional space? Absolutely. Should the, should the administration get together with, with the stakeholders and determine what some of the options might be? Absolutely. But I'm in favor of cutting this by $120,000, and I would so move. Motion. Now, Motion's been made and, and seconded that we're cutting um, public property by $120,000, correct? Let me just, let me just, let me just I got it. Uh, well, this is capital outlay, so it might be. I'm gonna do it over here. It's a change or two. Okay. 120,000 from reduced from 120 to zero. President, if I've done this correctly, and forgive me, uh, this is a pub, this is a capital outlay on page 202. So mm -hmm. I would move to reduce 120,000 by the full amount of 120,000, which would leave an amount of zero in that line item for public property capital outlay 589000. Motion was made and, and seconded on that. All in favor? Opposed? Passes. Next. I, I have a couple more. Let me do this one. Yeah, go ahead. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, 
I hereby move to reduce from the law department under personal services other than overtime the account by 433,324 and the amount will be reduced from 895,688 dollars to 462,364 dollars. Second. And Mr. President, the reason why I'm actually submitting this cut to the budget is that we are running a city that honestly is out of control when it comes to consultants. Uh, I am not against providing the law department consulting money, but I want to make sure that the public and us have some sort of a, uh, an understanding and, a, a, and basically accountability as to where these, uh, these funds are being used. And that's the reason why I'm submitting this, and I hope that my fellow councils will support this. On the motion. Uh, Count. Uh, uh, what, is, what is the actual bottom line, though, coming the, to the department? Did it, you? It's the personal services other than overtime, where the consultant is. How much was the cut? The total amount again was council, I'm sorry. It was to reduce it by $433,000, basically leaving, hopefully leaving that account with $50,000. Um, and again, I just want to make sure that uh, for the folks that are watching us at home, we're not uh, cutting the budget, but basically putting some restrictions on how these funds are being used. How much? Was it second? Yes. yes. It was second. Councilor Sullivan. On the motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilors, as I said, and I've said this every year for 14 years, the law department needs to be staffed at a higher rate. We need to treat it like a law firm. City of Quincy does it, New Bedford, Fairhaven, uh, Fall River, Haverhill. I mean, the city of Boston, I mean, it has a corporation law department there. So with this, with this cut in mind, um, I'm hopeful that some of these funds will be used to bring more staff in because, as Mr. Nazarella said it, they're working the best they can with what they have, but they're definitely short staff for the city of Brockton. So I will support this, but I'm hopeful that some money will be used to bring some shop lawyers to work for the city of Brockton. It's, it's way overdue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. And that's not to say we don't have shop lawyers here in the city of Brockton. <laughs> I say bring more in, more the merrier. Thank you. Yeah. All right, the motion was made in, in second. All in favor, hands up high. Opposed? It carries. Let's, let's get some clarity on. Moises. 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 Mr. President, do you have any yeah. more? No, no, no. Okay, all right. He's the only one that. Moises is all set. No, no, but we want to know what was your actual cut and what does it mean? I gave it to uh, Shane. That's what she's doing now. But before we go on to it, so we don't lose the. Well, I figured it all out. I was kind of really. Okay, so she's got. She's doing it now. Yeah, go ahead. You ready for? Councilor, you ready for Councilor Powell? Well, I'll wait for. Let's wait till this. He can wait one second. Let's. Yep. Uh, because at the end we're going to have to add these and amend the entire budget. Okay. So what did he cut it by? Four hundred thirty-three thousand. Three hundred twenty-four. Three twenty. Okay. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Council Fowell. Yes, uh, Mr. President. This is going to refer to page two seventy-two in the budget book, and it's DSAL line item five two nine four one two. And this is for the amount that is paid to Aquaria. And I want to make it very clear that the comments tonight have no animus towards Aquaria. This is strictly a mathematical exercise based on information that is public record and which they file under penalties of perjury. In 2017, the most number of gallons pumped by Aquaria was 3.256 million gallons per day and that occurred on 7-27-2017. The 2018 report is not out yet. It's usually filed within the last few days of June. They are obligated under the contract, and I have pages attached here, mm -hmm. if anyone would like to see it. 
they are obligated to be at 3.81 million gallons per day, and in June, July, and August, we could actually ask them to pump an extra half a million gallons per day. <coughs> so what I have done is I have taken the 3.27, 3.256 million gallons, and I bounced that against the 3.81, and they were 14.5 percent below what they're supposed to be. So I have taken the amount in the budget that we're supposed to pay them, and I've reduced it by 14.5 percent. And frankly, I hope they litigate it. Mm -hmm. I hope they come to us and they say, you're not meeting your obligation because I think we will have once and for all some arbitrator or some court decide who is right. Are we, in fact, having them live up to the contract that was signed many years ago? Now, that would that would remove $839,721 from that line item. So it would go from 5,791,180 to 4,951,459. Second. Now, if the worst happened and somehow someone said, you know, you've got to keep paying even though they're not doing what they're supposed to do, we still have the funding. And we do have a competent law department that should be able to go into court with the set of facts that's available. If they're available to me, they should be available to the law department and argue on behalf of our residents. I think we owe the residents this. I am convinced that Aquaria can't pump what they're obligated to pump, and it's really time to, to hold their feet accountable. We meet all of our obligations to them. They need to meet their obligations to us. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, you're still, you're still doing your second, right? Yes, I am. The motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, if, can I catch my breath for a minute if anyone else has a, has a, uh, a cut? Okay. Uh, Councilor Nicastro, do you have a, a reduction? There were several departments that listed um, positions as vacant unfunded. And I understood that vacant unfunded means that we're not funding them. And yet the amount of salary for those positions was listed in the column and was carried forward. And so I have a few of those that I would like to. Do you want uh, Mr. Clarkson to come up and, and try to explain as to why that said unfunded versus funded, yet it's still carried in the amounts? or are you okay. beyond that? All right, we can give it a whirl. Mr. Clarkson, I, I too noticed that there's quite a few items on the, uh, on the budget that basically said unfunded, but yet there were amounts mm -hmm. of the funded amounts uh, listed in, the, uh, in those positions. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. So I, I believe we had some discussion about this during the budget hearings. Um, we in putting together this budget, frankly, mostly as a function of my arrival in late February, um, continued some of the nomenclature that's typically been used in the past. I would agree that that is confusing. Uh, so yes. what we plan to do is to actually work over the next year to put together a budget that's compliant with the, the Government Finance Officers Association criteria that I think will make it clearer. Uh, so uh, I think the vacant unfunded represents a position that perhaps was unfunded in the past. Uh, all I can tell you is that we will strive to really clean up some of that uh, language moving forward, but that we, we wanted to honor the format that had been used pr previously so that counselors were comfortable with it. Councilor Castro. Thank you. It was my understanding that if it was listed as vacant unfunded, it wasn't funded. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I would just point you to each individual position, and if there's an amount of money that's suggested for appropriation next to it, it is proposed to be a position that's funded. Then why would it be listed that way? I would refer you back to the explanation I just offered. Okay, well, but yet there are other places where it says vacant funded and the number is included. So I would refer you back to the comments I, I just made. I mean, so there, there are some format, formatting issues that we found when we were putting the budget together that we'd like to address. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in the interest of getting you a budget on time, I think we, we continued with some of that nomenclature that, again, was as confusing to me as it is to you. So I think you can use as a rule of thumb if a position has a suggested appropriation alongside it, then it is proposed to be a position that's funded for fiscal year 2020. Point of, point of information through you, Mr. President. Um, Go ahead, sir. This could just be a, a Scribner's error. It could, it could have been vacant funded, but just, just an error in how it was printed or typed out, um, which would explain the money next to it as well. I, I can assure you one thing, and that is if there is a proposed appropriation next to a position, regardless of what the nomenclature is, it is proposed for funding for the next fiscal year. Yeah. Councilor Nicastro, you still have a clue. Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you. <coughs> just a smaller one. That just doesn't seem right to me, and that seems very confusing. And it happened here six or seven times. And the, the numbers total, I don't know, north of $500,000. And um, it's just a lot of money, and, and that's confusing. I would be inclined to reduce the budget by these amounts, and then if you need this, come back to us. Well, I w would certainly urge that you not do that. I, I've stated it several times now that I agree that it's confusing, that we honored the spirit of the format that had been used in the past so that the council was comfortable with it and agreed that we would work on addressing some of those issues uh, moving forward. So uh, uh, we put together, I think, uh, our team, along with the mayor's office, a budget that is fiscally conservative and very mindful uh, of the need to keep our spending down. So the positions that I put forward for your consideration were ones that, based on my experience, not just here in Brockton, but over the last 25 years or so, uh, considered to be necessary and important. So I would ask that you not reduce those positions simply because of a formatting issue within the budget, that those positions are real and necessary for the uh, sound operation of, of the government. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Uh, Council, do you have any additional ones? That you I do. I do. Uh, I have. Floor. I hereby move to reduce the DPW engineering budget. This is on page 109. Uh, there's items listed as for stormwater. Mm -hmm. Okay, you didn't do it. Okay. Personal services other than overtime. I would like to reduce the account by $167,741. Second. Motion has on the motion. On the motion. Just for clarification purposes, is this, again, we had three long nights of this, but is, are these the, t through you, Mr. President, Councilor Nicastro, are these the three positions that the ordinance hasn't even been submitted to the ordinance committee as yes. of yet? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, a motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Do you have another one, ma'am? Um, I do. Go for it. Um, page 145, Human Resources. Um, there were two new positions listed as vacant unfunded, totaling $114,042. And I would like to re re uh, reduce the budget by that amount. I, I'm sorry, I was distracted. Which uh, budget is that? Which one? This is Human Resources, page oh, yeah. 143, 143 and onward. 145. Personal services other than overtime. Yeah. On page one, I'm sorry, page 145, I didn't have my glasses on. Those threes and those fives look alike. Um, I, I don't think we can afford these positions at this time. I, I'm amenable to uh, something in the future. I do after this is done as recess. Check those figures, my figures. Go ahead, ma'am. You, you still have. You have to read it from what you're taking it from. Okay. 
I, I did read it. I hereby move to reduce from the hum, Human Resources Department personal services other than overtime, two items that are marked vacant, unfunded new positions. We'd be re reducing the account by $114,092. Second. What's the total number? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, the appropriation in that account is three eight four. <laughs> well, those those two items total one hundred fourteen thousand forty two dollars. What, what num Where are the? Uh, so it's reduced from two hundred twenty thousand seven hundred thirty two dollars to one hundred six thousand six hundred forty dollars. Does that sound right? Nope. We have the 384. I, I'm looking at a 145. It has 384. Uh, just, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, uh, just as a point of information, I think if you look on page 145, hmm? the total personal services would be 384,560. Yeah. Right. So if you back out 114,092, one, right. I believe you end up with 270,468. $270,468. But I will defer to Attorney Resnick. That sounds right to me. And just uh, on the motion. On the motion, sir. On the motion, just for my colleagues, uh, we had the Collins Institute do a report on human resources. Mm. Oh, never got Interestingly that. enough, they did not recommend hiring an assistant director of HR. They recommended hiring a senior human resources generalist, which would be a pay grade much below an assistant director. And I think that would be the appropriate way to go, is to have a brand new director of HR. I don't believe she's even been here a year yet. Let her get her bearings on exactly what we're doing and how we do it, any improvements we want to make, and then certainly entertain some motion or some request for an appropriation to bring in an appropriate staff member, but I'm not in favor of doing something that is contrary to the very report that the city commissioned and, and did not recommend uh, an assistant DHR. Thank you. All right, a motion has been made and properly seconded. <coughs> All those in favor of the reduction? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item. Are Thank you, you Mr. President. Uh, Council Fowell. I, yeah, I, I have a couple of minor ones. Uh, D, DPW Sewer Enterprise Account, page 260. 514300, $9,035 for holiday. There hasn't been a penny spent this year. That's a good thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cost saving. So I, I move to reduce the DPW Enterprise Sewer Account from uh, personal services other than overtime from $1,513,853 to $1,504,000, $1,504,818. Second. Um, a motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor of the reduction? All those opposed? Can we uh, do a roll call on that one, ma'am? Yeah. ASAC. Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? No. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? No. You have six in the affirmative, three in the negative. Motion carries. Next one, sir. All right, Mr. President, I basically have the same thing in the DPW Water Enterprise account, page 269-514-300, holiday. That's uh, a $10,000 line item, personal services other than, uh, than overtime. There's been no money spent this year or last year mm -hmm. out of that line item. Nothing. Zero. So, yeah, that, uh, so I, my motion is to reduce the Water Enterprise account Line item 514300 by $10,000. That would reduce it from $2,682,233 to $2,682,233. Motion Second. A motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor of the reduction? Roll call vote, Mr. President. Roll call vote it is. A 
Asak? No. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? No. Farwell? Yes. <clears throat> Lally? No. DeCastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? No. That's five in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion carries. Next one, sir. Uh, the next one is uh, Councilor Sullivan and I both submit this. Um, this is police personal services overtime. Let me get you the budget book page, pardon me. 191. 191, thank you. So just for our colleagues, it's 191. And there isn't anyone here who doesn't support giving the police all of the resources they need. However, you will notice that the department head, the chief, put in for a certain amount of overtime and the mayor increased it by $200,000. In addition, we have 25 or 26 patrol positions that are vacant. We have 17 officers who will be going to the police academy. That leaves eight or nine positions that are still funded, but they're not going to be filled for a substantial portion of the year. So there's going to be money within that police budget to move around for additional overtime if it's needed. There's nothing wrong with having them come back in and ask for funding. And you'll notice when the chief was here, and I, I, I just said a few minutes ago, it isn't a question whether we like someone or whether we work with them, but for all of the money that we're going to appropriate for the police department, we ask about could we have one car dedicated to respond to complaints about fireworks, noisy parties? Well, if we have the staffing. What about traffic enforcement? Well, if we have the staffing. You know what? Go back to your command staff, meet with them and say, the council's not happy, the residents aren't happy, because when we're here, we speak for the residents. It's not that Farwell or Beauregard or Lally or anyone else wants something. We're representing people who live in this city. Go back and look at your staffing pattern and come up with a plan and tell us how you're going to spend the money. I do not believe that's unreasonable and I think it's our job. So with that said, and I'll let my colleague comment on this, I would move to reduce the personal services overtime account for the police department by $300,000. That would reduce it from $1,390,414 to $1,090,414. And I would remind my colleagues there is still money in here for court time. That Second. is separate. Second. And we still have grants that come in during the year, so there'll be more overtime. Mm -hmm. But this just sends a statement that we're not going to just write a blank check. The motion has been properly made in second. All those on the motion, if I motion, could, sir. Mr. President. Uh, Councilors, if we just kind of turn back to the night when Chief Crowley was here. Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle request was 200,000. The mayor has authorized 250. That's great. They can buy five new SUVs, right? It's well overdue, well needed safety of the men and women in blue. But when I questioned the chief relative to his, uh, as a department head, the amount he thought was sufficient in the budget for overtime, again, the mayor came up with an additional $200,000. Now, there's been a lot of us on the council for a long time, and I can honestly say I never remember any Brockton City Councilor saying no when a police chief or fire chief comes before us for an appropriation. That's the checks and balances, right? We're the legislator, we're not the executive body. So if we go to over a million bucks, almost a, a million one for overtime, it should be sufficient. But the chief understands if it's not, there's a mechanism for a, a supplemental appropriation to come back before us. So this is by no means a slap in the face to the men and women, either, men and women that put their lives on the line every single day. And, and if they were here right now, they would acknowledge that. We're giving them the tools. They go out and they do the best they can every single day for the citizens. But at the end of the day, we as the legislative body have to do cost containment measures. It's not to say no, live on it. This is all we're giving you. You know, things happen and overtime appropriations are requested. But I think truly over a million bucks in overtime right now is, is more than sufficient. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, motion has been Properly made in second. All those in favor of the reduction? All those opposed? The motion carries. Council Powell? Yeah, I have one more, and this is 
This came up about three or four years ago. It's a minor adjustment in the mayor's budget, page 170. Uh, out of state travel, it's listed as 8540. Councillor Barnes, a couple of years ago, her last term, mentioned to him that, that it had always been $5,000. As a matter of fact, that's what he recommended last year, uh, and he had no problem with that. So I would move to. Uh, I would move to reduce ordinary maintenance out-of-state travel in the mayor's budget from $8,540 to $5,000, a reduction of $3,540, consistent Second. with what we've done uh, these past years. A motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor of the reduction? All those opposed? The reduction carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councilors. Any uh, additional reductions, cuts? That being said, we're going to take a quick reset just to do some tabulation, and we shall return. Councilors, we're back on. After some computation, the budget has been amended to reflect a reduction of $2,315,922. And we're going to have a, uh, a, the question will be on the amending of the budget. And we're going to do a roll call on that, just okay. to be on the safe side. Um, ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative. They are in opposition. The reduction is adopted. Now the question is on the adoption of the entire 2020 budget as amended. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASEC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Dean Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative, zero in opposition. The 2020 budget is adopted. Uh, Councilors, I believe that concludes our our budget season and again I want to just thank everybody that put up with us for the three days that we were here and throughout this uh, uh, small short one hour meeting that we've had but again thank you very much for all that you do and continue to do and we're going to take a Mr. President we want to thank you for your prof professionalism and leadership those three nights as well thank you Mr. President thank you sir With nothing else uh, on this particular special meeting of the City Council, I adjourn that.